So I'll Seb, thank you very much for the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Do I need two hands to count the goals? Or do I, I just need one, don't I? I think um, maybe if we include assists as well, I think he has one of those or something. No, I, I, I'm, I'm cussing him, but he, he, I do feel bad for the bloke. Uh, it just hasn't worked out. This has been covered a thousand times by Gio and Gonzo and everyone in the media, to be honest. It's just no matter where you look, any articles you read, you'll get the same. Result. We just never, ever, ever played to his strengths whatsoever. Um, when he was at Frankfurt, he was the team was built around him. We were never going to do that. We never had a game plan. And right, rightly said before, it's um, he was never in. He's never going to be in Moyes' plans. He's not his type of player. With the system that's now working for us, I think even Moyes is surprising himself with the system that we're adopting. He's he's changed his tune from the past. He's changing how he works because of the players we've got. But Tana said, thank you very much for the um, memories. Oh, we'll run through them. Uh, he signed. That was exciting. Um, we got a bicycle kick that will go down as one of the goals of the season. That's good. That's a good thing. Um, let's see. Oh, and the 20 plus million pound loss. Brilliant. Yeah, that that's hilarious. That is absolutely hilarious. Um, but also typical of, of West Ham, isn't it? It's just typical. But we move on. He's gone. He's gone to Ajax. Good for him. I do hope it works out for him. I really do. I was gutted that we just couldn't make it work. I was absolutely gutted. But he didn't want to be there. Let's be honest. His body language was saying other way. He did not want to be at West Ham at all. And if you go on his Instagram, um, he's straight away been up on it. He's not that active on Instagram, really. Um, he doesn't post a lot. And when he does, it's normally just the general West Ham marketing a, the media machine going it there's your graphic post that get some interest going for the game being broadcast on amazon or whatever's going on but he uh, uh um <laughs> um yeah quick reminder i do have tourettes i think if you see one of my videos before um yeah so that will happen um doo -doo 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 -doo, lost my train of thought now um <laughs> um this is the problem with doing videos. Uh, yeah, no. It, anyway, social media. There we go. It would happen eventually. So we, um, he's not been very active on there when he's been at West Ham, other than the general stuff. However, the last twenty-four hours, not even twelve hours, even he is, he is so happy to be at Ajax. He's so happy to be at Ajax. I don't just think it's Ajax. I think it's just getting away from West Ham. I think he just feels like, oh, thank Christ, I haven't had to wait out any more time, losing my value, losing my status in European football as a highly regarded striker, which he was, and thankfully now still will be um, for the remainder of his career. If it works out for him, I'm sure it will. Ajax will get the best out of him, and he knows that. But he's, his social media posts, he's done about six, seven stories so far uh, throughout the course of the evening medical and wearing the shirt and this and that he didn't even do that when he was signing for West Ham other than one or two posts he never really did it <laughs> so um um yeah it's good for him good for him he seems happy and with everything that's going on in the world you just want really to be happy don't you even if that's losing a financial hit however we move on hopefully we've got a target in mind but yeah, I uh, just it's a shame, but I hope it works out for him. I really, really do hope it works out for Haller. Um And yeah, let's go get another striker. Not on Altovic. Not happening. No, 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 no. No, let's not do that. Let's not let's not do that, please. I got back into doing all the West Ham, you know, getting into the news and this and that a couple of years ago right at the tail end of that Arnautovic stuff I missed a lot of the drama a lot of the the I missed the Payat era Payat? Who's Payat? Payat! Hey! hey. Ha. Apparently my Tourette's calls it Payat <clears throat> Payat 
I missed all of that drama, really. I picked up on the tail end of that going into and out of it when he had all the issues. And and I want to be here, I don't want to be here. I want to be here, I don't want to be here. Give me money. I don't, he don't, I, I was I was aware of all that at the time. I, I don't, I wasn't around for the whole saga, but even I don't want him back. We are, we've got such a positive attitude going in that dressing room and on the training field. It seems, at least at the moment anyway, with the current crop that we've got. And with, especially, especially with Halle gone now, you could tell the last couple of games, a lot of the a lot of the new signings, you know, Suchek, uh, Sufal, um, Bowen and, and Ben Rama actually as, as well, as, as well as players coming back, you know, like Lanzini, who's been, had a lot more game time after his injury now in the last couple of games. You can tell they'll do 20, 30 minutes where Halle will be on the pitch and they'll they'll know he's there and they'll look up and and they turn. They don't want to do it. They give him the first half hour, but he'll lose the ball. It wasn't in the right position. He won't run after it. They're thinking they're playing with Antonio. They think they're playing with a striker who can see the goal, who knows instinctively where it is, knows his system, knows the players around him, knows who will put the ball in. Where He just... Haller has his way, and that's his way. That's how he's been drilled. We never done anything different with him. But the players on the pitch never adapted to that. They never felt they needed to because he was just a stopgap. And after half an hour, every game they would just look up and you could see them. He would actually be free of possession. He would be free. He wouldn't be man-marked. <laughs> no one man-marked him. Why would they? Why would they man-mark him? There's no need. He's not going to do much unless it's coming in in the air. But if it's just, you know, pass and move, no one ever did it after half an hour. They gave him chances and chances. But Ben Rama in the last game, I think it was he, against Everton, he had a clear chip into Haller. And he ended up just betting on himself. Ten minutes later, Bowen did the same thing. Haller is clear. And you can see them. They look up. They gl- they go, I'll cut in. I'll go. Ra- I'd rather bet on myself and do it myself than do this now. Because we're just losing the ball. It's going back. You know, if it looks like fish and it smells like fish, it's probably fish, isn't it, really? So that's the issue they've had with Haller. So with him gone... That will hopefully bring the bring the sort of supporting attacking, you know, part of our our game, and the players that we've got in. I'm hoping it will motivate them to think right. We've got a, if we get a replacement, the new striker. If it's aside from Antonio, the new striker. Can we work? Okay. Um. Can we work around him? Can we work around him? They'll. I think they'll be more motivated to. To include them in their tact, in their method, in their way of playing, in their in their in their tactics, you know, I think that the players would be more willing to do that, to press forward, to pass and move a bit quicker. That they want to do, they want to make those runs, they want to do the through through balls, whether it's so far, whether it's Fredericks, whether it's Fornells, bless him, he ain't the, he's a bit slow, but he does try. They all try, and Heller has always been the weak link. The players know it. Let's get a player in there who can fill that gap to motivate the players. And I think even if you get, even if you get a, a bang, a bang average, but you know, a good twenty million pound striker, right? I'm not as long as they. I mean, they can't really do much worse than Haller, really, in terms of the system, not in terms of the quality of player, but in terms of the system, you can't do much worse than that. I think so. Arnautovic coming in, we've just got rid of some negativity, some doubt in our attacking part of the game. If we then replace that with Arnautovic, I mean, head out of the frying pan, into the fire, isn't it, really? I mean, the, the... the players will just be demotivated, I think. They all, they'll all be aware of what's going on. Most of them have been there in the on out of it era. Anyway, so I'm pretty sure that will just create more negativity. So playing aspects and attributes and striking prowess aside, whether on out of it just got it or not still, from a, a psychological sort of tactical motivational, energetic, enthusiastic side 
of our West Ham squad, which we have in abundance at the moment. Absolutely. And that is what is that hard graph and enthusiasm and motivation of working for the team is what is getting us results. When we are not playing well, we're still grinding out some results more often than not now. And that's because we have an absolute undying work ethic and motivation playing as a team. Haller was the weak link in that. He was never really a part of it. Arnautovic will never become a part of it. The players will just reject him again. And rightfully so, given how things ended. But it can't be. Not Arnautovic. Anyone else. You get a half-decent striker in there from, you know... <clears throat> I'm not expecting Ronaldo to come. I'm not expecting, you know, to get a big name player. I really don't care. I think I just want someone, anyone, because the system we've got, a lot of our goals come from defenders. We are set-piece specialists. We are solid at the back now, it seems. Who would have thought that? I wouldn't be saying that this time last year. We are solid at the back. <clears throat> we have aerial dominance in every part of the pitch. Our midfield is becoming as tight as a drum and will you just put our striker and striker up there or two whatever works Bowie and Ben Rama Lanzini uh, four hours if he gets a tap in Ogbon anyone on our team can score a goal it's, it's been proven anyone I'm not I wouldn't play past Fabianski at some point to graft the goal because we just seem to be so good from set pieces. Something will happen. I don't know. A 93rd minute keeper run up to get the equaliser. So I'm sure Fabianski will score a goal in his time at West Ham still. So everyone on that pitch can can score a goal for West Ham. So just get a striker. Any striker. I am actually not that fussed. You know, I don't want, you know, some 16-year-old coming in, you know, on a oh he's meant to be the prodigy I don't want none of that I want someone worth some money with some kind of status or some reputation and some numbers and to go by but you put anyone up there in that current West Ham setup we are in for some we're in for some more points we're in for some def, definitely in for some more points there so uh, anyway yeah let's just go get a striker cheers Hilaire bye bye it's been hilarious.